young man I saved uh, who had a ruptured spleen. And I asked him where he was from. He said Lakewood, Ohio, which is like seven miles down the road from where I live. And then months later, I was going to duty in another area at the airport. A woman asked me, she was behind the Delta desk. And she said, oh, are you going, you, you coming, you're going back to Iraq? And I said, no, I've been there already. And she proceeded to tell me the story of her son. It was his mother. He fell out of a helicopter, ruptured his spleen. People missed it. I didn't, got him in an operating room, saved his life. And she turned to me and she said, you know, everyone missed it except this older doctor, me, who came in. She didn't know who I was and saved my son's life. And she didn't have a name to have gone. And I asked her, Mrs. Smith, not her real name, how is Chris doing? And she looked at me in astonishment and said, it was you. <laughs> I said, yes, I, I tended to your son that day. How's he doing? She began to cry, stepped across the weighing scale, embraced me and said something in my ear that I'll never forget. She said, you saved my son's life my little boy came home to me because of you. And at that moment in the airport, in this extraordinary coincidence, if you believe in coincidences, everything became worthwhile. The suffering, the hardship, the danger, the separation from family, it became worthwhile in that one moment because I realized I had done what I said I was going to do. Take care of the neighbor's kid. Not necessarily literal neighbors like this young man was, but the people who grew up contemporaneously with my own children. Little did I know at the time that the neighbor's kids were also Muhammad's kids and Ahmed's kids. I took care of them too.